Um, I have 16 slides here, and you'll be glad to know I don't propose to go through all of them in detail. This will be a brief scamper through the key pieces of policy related to patient and public involvement, not every possible document, as there are many, many more. The intention is to give an overview of involvement and the long-standing policy commitment to public involvement within health and social care, and the factors that are driving change now. A bit of history to start off with. 1974, local health councils were set up with the wide remit of representing the public interest within health service planning and provision. This was the first time that patient and public voice was introduced formally into the NHS. Interestingly, the Francis Report on the Mid-Staffs tra tragedy condemned the abolition of the English equivalent, community health councils, and I'll mention more about that later on. In 1990, we had the NHS Community Care Act, and this put emphasis again on joint working with health and social care. Community care forums were established to represent the views of community care client groups, and some still exist, such as Your Voices in Inverclyde. They had support from both health and social care staff, and I think this was a good practice feature that we might think about in, in the new structures. Um, Design to Care was a white paper that proposed a vision of a patient-focused service built on partnership. And again, some of the kind of key words are emerging already. 2000, our National Health, a plan for action, a plan for change, included a commitment to strengthening the influence of patients and the public, identifying the need for a radical change to bring about a patient-centred NHS, concluding there's a clear view that the NHS still does things to people rather than with them, and we will ensure that listening, understanding, and acting on the views of local communities, patients and carers, is given the same priority as clinical standards and financial performance. The NHS Reform Act um, put a duty on, it, it dissolved the NHS Trust and established the community health um, partnerships, put a duty on boards to involve the public in the planning of health services, and brought about the dissolution of local health councils and the creation of the Scottish Health Council, and also new guidance for involving people in service change. Um, better health, better health, better care. This is a vintage year. Um, we heard about, heard from citizens of Scotland about the importance of communication, participation, being listened to, and having the opportunity to play a stronger part within the NHS. We now need to ensure that patient focus and public involvement are core drivers of decision making and not an afterthought or side issue. This was a really vintage year. It flagged up new process of independent scrutiny, which the Scottish Health Council led on, a pilot for directly elected boards, the new participation standard, which was developed by the Scottish Health Council, strengthened public partnership forums, and a new patient bill of rights. First of all, we had the Christie Report on the Future Delivery of Public Services. And this was followed by the Community Empowerment Renewal Bill, which responded to the issues raised by Christie. Then we had the consultation on the proposed Community and, um, Empowerment and Renewal Bill and the Adult Health and Social Integration Bill, which all kind of fits together quite nicely. Um, the consultation around the strengthening participation aspect of community empowerment covered issues such as community engagement and community planning, a greater role for communities in sp directing spending in their areas, and an overarching duty on public organisations to engage, and again, views on introducing a duty to follow the national standards for community engagement. All of these policies make clear the lead role of local authorities and community planning. An ongoing commitment to strengthening community engagement and participation within community planning, and the idea of user-centered services based upon ideas of individual needs assessments and the development of systems and processes enabling a quicker response from service agencies. Opportunities for people to take a lead in planning services and the importance of the national standards for community engagement. The statement of ambition for community planning said that it made clear that communities have a key role in helping to shape and co-produce better outcomes and that unlocking that potential requires community uh, planning partnerships to have a strong understanding of communities and to provide genuine opportunities to consult, engage and involve them. The common ground, I think, is that the NHS has more formal policy and legislative direction but a stronger culture of service user involvement and community engagement in social care. 
probably. National standards for community engagement used across health and social care. And I think the lessons from the Francis report um, say that, suggest that we need to get this right for Scotland and building on a shared culture and strengths. The mid staff's experience will hopefully never be experienced anywhere again. But concerns about pati patient and public involvement were raised in the report. This report was produced as a result of issues around serious and significant failures in health care in the Mid-Staffordshire NHS Foundation Trust in England. These failures prompted both an independent inquiry and a public inquiry. The public inquiry explored issues of organisational change and systems in the NHS. The report produced is extremely crit critical of the arrangements in England to support patient and public involvement. <coughs> it suggests that while there have been a range of routes through which patients and members of the public can link into health services and hold them to account, these have been largely ineffective. It suggested that communities were reticent in raising concerns and those who did raise concerns were not heard or did not have a voice. And it also suggested that patient involvement structures have relied largely on goodwill to make them work rather than support, training and guidance. And I think these issues emerged last week at a meeting that we had in Edinburgh, the same as this one today. And delegates were saying that that was what was important for the future was that support and training and that you couldn't expect members of the public to do this without, without that. Community health councils were almost invariably compared favourably in the evidence with the structures which succeeded them. Neither of the systems which followed was likely to develop the means or the authority to provide an effective channel of communication through which the healthcare system could benefit from the enormous resource of patient and public experience waiting to be exploited. While the health system in Scotland is, is different, the Francis report does emphasise the need to get this right and we ignore the learning from Francis at her peril. Current situation, like Peter, I can't get used to calling it this public body's joint working Scotland bill overview. It's for me, it's the health and social care integration. Um, it's not clear why they're suggesting this, this um, change in name and it may be that it's signalling a shift in focus towards structural aspects of the integration agenda. It's setting out options for integrated structures and integrated plans and states that the integration authority will be required to involve a range of partners in the development of the plan and consult widely. In addition, locality planning duties will require the integration authority to make suitable arrangements to consult and plan locally for the needs of its population. Section four is on integrated planning principles and these principles are just about taking account of the well-being of people, using the viewpoint of people that use services, services are planned and led locally, services anticipate and prevent needs from arising, services make best use of the available facilities, people and other resources, and the government response to the 2012 consultation exercise on proposals to integrate said that it is therefore our intention to legislate with a duty on health and social care partnerships to engage with and involve rather than merely to consult representatives of patients, people who use services and carers regarding how best to put in place local arrangements for planning service provision. While these integration planning principles are to be welcomed, they don't appear to really place a duty to engage with and involve. The national outcomes um, will provide um, for improved experience of services um, there is not a national outcome yet around public involvement um, and that's practically something that we can be discussing um, later on today. Consultation of the integrated plans. The bill sets out consultation requirements in relation to the integrated plans and the local authority and the health board have to jointly consult. Um, and they're required to take account of the views expressed as part of the consultation when finalising the plans. It also talks about significant decisions outside the strategic plan and public involvement in these, and that perhaps reflects a requirement to consult in relation to major service change. There isn't a requirement to consult on revised plans, but there is a requirement to consult on new plans. So there's maybe a bit of a gap there as well. Community health partnerships are repealed and it could be argued as are public partnership forums by default. 
I think what's important here is that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and that we build on the people and the activities that have been shown to work and demonstrate an impact. Um, <coughs> this is about working with um, the third sector and I should mention the um, third sector matrix which was issued recently um, and this is about um, helping the third sector and boards to work more closely together. It says in the document that use of the matrix will assist in the co-production of planning and delivery of services, especially with those communities or population groups that are not easy to engage with. Using it should act as a catalyst for new conversations and opportunities for health boards and the third sector to work together. It's also intended to dovetail into other existing arrangements, such as the Visioning Outcomes and Community Engagement, the VOICE tool, which focuses on community engagement. Scrutiny, um, a joint role for Healthcare Improvement Scotland and Social Care, Social Work Improvement Scotland. Um, care inspectorate to retain their current functions in relation to health services and social services respectively. Again, we have to think about how public involvement is going to be assessed um, and how we're going to find the evidence to show that we're achieving um, the outcomes. Final thought, um, Community Empowerment and Renewal Bill has strong statements about strengthening community participation and the draft bill will be consulted on over this summer. Both the current bills, are about, uh, there's bits in them about involving people, but there's nothing specific at the moment and that's why your views are really important in shaping this in terms of what the structures might look like, what the opportunities might be, what the standards and outcomes might look like and what the assessment process might be like. I think that's quite enough from me. Thank you all very much indeed.